Welcome to What the Duck, a podcast with real experts talking about real issues in direct spin supply chain. And now, here's your host, Source Day's very own supply chain maven, Sarah Scudder. Thanks for joining me for the What the Duck, another supply chain podcast brought to you by Source Day. I'm your host, Sarah Scudder, and this is the podcast for people working in the direct materials part of supply chain. Today, I'm going to be joined by Dan Luke, and we're going to discuss how to get suppliers to adopt a new supply chain software. If you work for a company that is struggling to get your suppliers to adopt a new system, then this episode is for you. I'm at Sarah Scudder on LinkedIn and at S Scudder on Twitter. If you are new to the show, make sure to follow this podcast so you don't miss any of our direct spend supply chain content. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Dan Luke. Dan is a strategic sourcing manager at Provisor Technologies. Provisor's manufactures food processing equipment. Dan oversees supplier capacity planning and is responsible for key performance indicators for fill rates, on-time deliveries, cost savings, quality, and inventory turns. Dan is known for his ability to get strong supplier adoption and usage when his supply chain team implements new software. Welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you. So how did you wind up in supply chain? Well, uh, my first job was in distribution, and I always like to negotiate. I like the relationship, uh, working with suppliers and what they bring to the table. Um, and getting more into supply chain, when I moved from distribution to manufacturing, I decided that it was time to get some certifications and kind of understand the whole realm of manufacturing. So I went and got certified at APEX, American Production Inventory Control Society, and also received my CPM, uh, Certified um, uh, Purchasing Management degree. And they you know, have been working with suppliers for now over 35 years. Why were you drawn specifically to manufacturing? Well, um, distribution has its limitations. You don't have as much interaction with the, you know, the people on the floor, uh, what you're, what you're bringing, uh, to the table. I enjoy watching things being built. I enjoy seeing the end product and, you know, where that goes out in the market. Uh, I've been in telecommunications, other electronics, and finally at Provisor where we make, uh, food processing equipment. So to me, that's exciting, being able to walk out on the floor and, you know, all the things that you're bringing in and the things that you're doing and how it makes a difference with your company. What does supplier relationship management mean to you? Uh, Sarah, it means everything. Um, that's, that's very important to have a good relationship with your suppliers. Um, it's a two-way street. Um, I learn about their business and what it takes to run it, what the cost drivers are, um, capacity restraints, uh, things that they're struggling with. And I, in turn, you know, relay my expectations and what we need on our side to make our company successful. So bringing those things together and both of us learning about each other's, you know, process, um, what what we do, uh, that that's key to success. So in prepping for this interview, Dan, you said something to me that really stood out. Why do you believe that a supplier should be a buyer's most important stakeholder? Well, I always tell my buyers, you're actually more of a salesperson, uh, the more that you can entice them and they want to be a supplier to your company, you know, what do they have to look forward to? New products, um, new opportunities on their end. Uh, that's, that's what you're, you're selling. 
So the more that they want to be a part of your business, the more they are going to put forward um, and try to be that key um, partner. When selecting a new software, which I know your your team has done many times throughout your 35-year career. Right. Why should what should you prioritize to help ensure you get good supplier adoption? And I, I want to highlight this because I think this is something that is often missed when companies are going out and assessing and looking at software. They're looking often at the end user experience, but not the experience of the supplier. Well, our our adoption has been on all three sides, planning buying and and the suppliers i probably started talking about this to our key you know 25 suppliers um six months before we were ready to roll out i i got them keyed into what this was going to do as far as our communication um the, we we struggle with all the emails uh, back and forth, back and forth, and and trying to have one location where all um, of the information was housed. Um, suppliers can can go into it, buyers, planners, and we all have one place and not you know many many emails. I remember talking to the buyers and asked them. I know you struggle with all the emails. What percentage is probably expediting and back and forth with suppliers? And they probably said about 75%. So any way that we can, you know, group that information together and put it all in one spot and, you know, preparing them ahead of time, that that's keys to success. I also asked some of them if they've ever been on a different uh call it a portal system, um, communication like that. And many of them have. And when I asked them which ones, I had a few people that said source day, and that's the best one they've been on. And when you were looking at this software solution option to help your suppliers minimize the amount of emails and manual work that they were doing, what was your strategy? How did you go about that selection process? Well, um, it was actually, you know, presented to me um, back in 2018, where the sales rep uh, wanted to come in and, you know, show me his his product. Uh, they actually sat down with my counterpart on materials management, and we did a, a SWOT analysis there, and showing them what we do well, what we need to do better. And and then they took a look at our whole dynamic and took our situation and showed us how it would fit into Source Day. So that they they listened to us. They also had a, you know, we had them all in on meeting afterwards. We had the buyers and the planners when they later on presented the product to go through it and show them all the steps and you know what to expect going forward get all their questions out front what does good supplier adoption mean to you and the reason i ask you this is when i was prepping for our interview some of your peers describe you as the the supplier whisperer or somebody who just <laughs> excels at getting suppliers to adopt and and use a new system, which is something that's very, very challenging for a lot of people. Yeah, one of the things that, um, you know, I've heard before is uh, partnership and respect and both of us growing and getting better. So, you know, some of the things that I've adopted back in 2015 were scorecards, actually back to um, in the mid 1995 and to 2000, doing scorecards um, more on a manual, you know, process. Then I put that in place at Provisor about 2015, where, you know, the first thing we looked at was how do we track our on time, 
then the next one was quality. And a lot of the other metrics were more subjective. You know, how well do they interact with uh, engineers, communicate back to you, uh, acknowledgements and so on. Uh, what I liked about Source Day is that my goal is to take those things that were done on other programs and the live version uh, that we can do where everyone can see it. The buyer can see it. The supplier can see exactly where they're scoring. Um, we have quarterly reviews with our suppliers. Uh, we set the expectations. Uh, and then at the uh, end of the year, first of the year, we have a, a formal um, year in review where we go through their scorecard. It shouldn't be a surprise on how they're doing and what we expect and what our goals are. And that's when we set the goals for the next year. If we wanted to um, go from 95% on time, uh, maybe the next year it's 96. We're shooting for 98. We've been very close to that. And um, with the things that have changed with the pandemic and, and the supply chain, I think we're down to probably around 94 now. So we got to get that back up. It, it's difficult, um, but uh, they know that that's what we expect. That's what they know we need. And I was talking to a supplier the other day and they said, you know, we really appreciate what you've done to make us a better company. And that means a lot. You know, we're both trying to make each other better at, at what we do. Why is getting suppliers to adopt a new software solution so difficult? Well, you, you've got, uh, we have some suppliers that have been with us 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, we have some that have moved along with time and embraced change and like to see things more efficient, better way of doing things. And we have some that, you know, like everyone, uh, they're used to their old ways. Uh, this, I, I don't want to learn it. Uh, this takes too long. Um, but we work through those. Um, most of them want to make a difference. They want to do a good job. Um, and your company does an excellent job of onboarding, um, answering their questions. Uh, the things that I liked was the... Uh, the videos that you have available to them to look at, the step-by-step -step, uh, 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 process that they can look up and see how to do things. They've got the live chat, and then they've got an email support. It, it's all there at their fingertips. And your training people are very good where if they want a special Zoom conference to go over their particular problems, They've been more than happy to jump in and do that. So, you know, trying to take away the excuses. It it may not have been the best time to start out an ad source day because of this supply chain issue, things going out uh, from six weeks to six months and so on and further. Um, so a lot of people struggle and they're always firefighting, but we want to get away from firefighting and go forward and be proactive. And, and the way to do that is, you know, through, um, you know, software companies like yourself, anything where we can, you know, minimize um, the time we spend doing it. So you successfully rolled out RPO collaboration software. And one of the reasons it's been so successful is your ability to get supplier adoption, even getting suppliers complimenting and thanking you for rolling out our software. We have buyers that are listening to this that are really, really struggling potentially with rolling out some sort of new supply chain software because they're not able to get their suppliers to adopt and they're getting pushback. Can you walk me through the steps that a buyer should in, uh, take from start to finish as they're going through this process of trying to train on board and get suppliers to use a new system? Well, it 
it benefits everyone, uh, not just on our side, but also their side. So um, few acknowledgements for one, one thing. We never had a way of tracking if they got the PO, did they accept it? Did they look at the dates, the uh, descriptions, the pricing, everything that should be involved in that? So what we would do is once a week, we would send out an open order report to them. They would have to manually go through that and, and look at it, making sure that there wasn't a glitch, that they didn't miss a PO, that you know if we all matched together, that we were on the same page, that if they show they shipped it complete, that it was off of there. Uh, if they show that they you know shipped half of it and we didn't see that, you don't know, go through the discrepancies. But you know, showing them how we can do it. Uh, and they can be on this portal anytime they want. They they get all the open orders. They all go to them automatically. And we can see when they acknowledge and when they look at it. And they can send us back any kind of you know changes. No, I can't meet that date. Um, that price is different. And we can get those resolved right away. We don't you know, waste time with emails going back and forth and then having to go into our system to change them. If we accept the date, we accept it and it changes it. And it and it automatically changes our system every 15 minutes. Same thing with the pricing. It goes over to the buyer. If he accepts it, it will change the PO and get changed in our system. And if they don't, then they can make the comments back and so on. But we have all that interaction right there and we see, you know, what their responses have been. Where before you would have to dig through emails and just kind of showing them in reality that, yes, you have to learn something new. It's not difficult. It's very intuitive. Like I said, people, you know, praised, uh, you know, how easy Source Day was. Um, and and like it. I had another one that he's like, he's our rock star and he, you know, he loves it. He's like, I, I would never go back. So, you know, using that to tell the other people who don't want to adapt it, what's keeping you back? Asking the questions, resolve their, their issues one by one. How do you overcome or how did you overcome objections at the very beginning before suppliers had a chance to actually use the software that said, you know, we're not going to use this. No way. We're not. We have no interest in using a new system. Um, that, that's a good question, because I really haven't, you know, had anybody that says, no, we won't do it. Um, yes, the, there are some that have five and six different portals that they work with. There are some where um, maybe this is the first one, but it it is an easy thing to do. You know, there there's got to be a legitimate reason why they say no, and I'm not sure what what that legitimate reason could be because it it benefits both sides. Um, and and we need to be able to communicate. If 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 they're going to supply to us and they're a partner, and you know we we need to to have that uh, relationship where you know we both agree on what their expectations are. You know if if I want acknowledgments twenty four to forty eight hours, then that's what our company needs. Um, if we need them to update, you know. Uh, date requests within 24 hours, then that's what we need. If, you know, I want to measure our on-time delivery and that's a, a key goal for us, then it's a key goal for them. One of the other things that's been important to your success is the data and metrics piece. What supplier adoption metric should a buyer track? Well, like I said, the first thing that I always started out with was on time. You know, that's, that's you know, key. You, you've got to have good dates, uh, especially these days. Um, I don't want to see any kind of lates on, on the report. 
And I can see that when I go to the source day dashboard. Um, the next to me is is quality. Um, it's got to come in if I, it gets rejected and I can take time to send it back. Um, I measure all kinds of quality. I measure um, the, the quality of the POs and my buyers are responsible for 100% accuracy. And, and so is the supplier. The packing slip's got to be 100% accurate. The invoice has got to be accurate. And we have to have that three-way match in order to get paid. So obviously their incentive is to get it right the first time. Um, after that, um, responsiveness, which now I can have a, an exact measurement through source day. So the responsiveness to the acknowledgements and also to their updates. Um, to me, that's very important. Um, the next one that uh, working on with Source Day is we will be measuring their purchase price variance. Another key indicator. Uh, obviously, people roll standards typically once a year. And there are changes, especially in this day and age, uh, where we used to be able to negotiate and get our cost uh, to be held for a minimum of a year, uh, sometimes two. Um, nowadays with, uh, you know, the changes, you know, how do we measure, um, how they've been able to do since the January 1st roll on standards and what are the pricing at now, you know, and how have we been able to, you know, minimize that, uh, increase or try to do cost avoidance and, and get those, uh, you know, orders to be accepted further out than what they want it to be. So those are some of the, the key things that we want to make sure we measure. What about from a supplier perspective? What data or metrics are important for them? Have you seen or heard any asks that really stood out to you, the metrics that they're prioritizing? Um, they would obviously, you know, like to do more contracts, blankets, um, vendor managed inventory, auto replenish. And, and by doing that, what we try to do is I, I mentioned that we need to get into their facilities and understand their business. So if a buyer or buyer planner is giving them all these small orders, you know, continually, that becomes a lot more work. Better to negotiate it and put things up front, allowing them to plan their system and be more uh, effective and, and efficient the way they run. So, you know, you have to know their side and they need to know your side in order to work out, you know, programs and ways of, of filling that, you know, supply chain and having a pipeline that makes sense. We do that. We do that a lot. What's your favorite supplier adoption success story? Um, we have a metal fabricator who is our top one. I've actually got two. Uh, one is a distributor, but the first one, a, a metal fabricator, they actually used and really adopted and, and dug into, you know, the training of, of Source Day. And they now export the information into their, um, I'll call it their ERP system. Um, and now when I go through their facilities, and they've got uh, these, you know, schedules on each part of their process um, to to make something. They can take our information, put it in there, and if we mark hot on a source day item, it shows up now as hot on their boards right in front of their workstations. So that that was very good, and that's the one that said. You, you've made us a better supplier. So, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. And the other one was the distributor who we set up uh, a customer safety stock program. And, you know, that has been very efficient as a pull system coming out of theirs and managing that. But he loves to be able to communicate right through that system and, and get the updates done. And, they, I've got a lot of suppliers that that look at those metrics 
And don't question, you know, I know that that was received, you know, on Monday and your results show you didn't put it in until Wednesday and they don't want to get ding. You know, the more they see that scorecard, the more they want to do the right thing and get better. If people want to check you out, where do you want to send them? Uh, they can find me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, I am there. And any questions they have, they can, you know, ask to, to join. And I'll be glad to answer their questions. Thanks for discussing how to get suppliers to adopt new supply chain software with us today, Dan, and in particular, sharing your experience using our PO collaboration software and how you've been so successful in getting supplier adoption. If you've missed anything, you can check out the show notes. If you are new to the show, make sure to follow this podcast so you don't miss any of our direct spend supply chain content. I'm at Sarah Scudder on LinkedIn and at S Scudder on Twitter. This brings us to yet another episode of What the Duck, another supply chain podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Scudder, and we'll be back next week. 